your lordship would be asked to turn parliamentary and party based democracy on its head if you were told that whip is not issued by the political party what your lordship is shown just now is totally irrelevant and red herring because it is intimating to the speaker and the house that in this house my leader is so and so that is a communication between those in the house communicating with the speaker speaker has to know whom to communicate with it is no communication of the party with its members that's the whip and that the party issues the party decides but that was a part we'll come to those rules so this is completely irrelevant that plus it is no it cannot be anybody's case that in the context of a whip the party the political party is to be ignored and the legislative party is to be looked at now we'll but leave that aside let me go in my own sequence first because i'll come to that malas your lordships ended before lunch with a simple flood finish with a flourish malas about democracy let me just start with that now malas the first submission and i am not going to follow this sequence allow me to oralize malas my first of my sequence eight facets is malas something which is repeatedly fallen from your lordships and malas yesterday it fell directly from my lord justice narsimha that malas <coughs> your lordship is concerned about democracy majority becoming less or your lordship use of word overwhelming numbers going this way or that way this is correct to that possible answer in one way i am now giving your lordship a different facet but as my submission is that your lordship has to go back to the origins of the 10th schedule and first point under this head this head was is that the 10th schedule has two components not only one one is a prohibitory negative code it's a negative code so a negative code is what you should not do violate you know whip voluntary resignation cohabiting with balas other people etc but there is also an affirmative positive part of that code <clears throat> and what the 10th schedule does is to strike a balance between the negative and the positive by a constitutional amendment it is my respectful submission is vital for your lordships to give effect to both negative and positive in letter and spirit because your lordship is actually implementing the constitution and some of the arguments of the other side have bordered on suggesting that a mere i'm using the word mere advisedly in comparison to a constitutional text a mere symbols order will be competing with a constitutional text that would be malus completely anathema to all known principles what are these two codes malus the negative code is that you in a nutshell i'm just saying in a nutshell i'm oversimplifying you will not voluntarily give up membership to an a and you will not violate whips to one b just in a broad bullet summary what is the affirmative permissible activity you are entitled to dissent only within that permissible zone otherwise why enact the 10 schedule bullet prior to 85 you didn't have the 10 schedule you had jungle raj which you call iram gairam sometimes but bullet then you can also justify that in the name of free speech free action what you did here was you allowed a zone of activity permissible affirmative but you cannot you cannot say that i will go beyond that permissible and thereby violate indirectly the negative code also what is that permissible activity the affirmative code of conduct one is a faction or a split till the 91st amendment they gave you an escape route advisedly consciously that has gone it was there so what is the constitutional famous thought that along with a negative code of conduct so as not to stifle you completely we give you an escape root exit root of faction or one third or whatever it was called this second merger third and this is actually what well, is the most important part of tenth schedule well is elections barring a few cases well, in the days of 1960s etc well, is, there used to be a very strong large number of independents independents have now dwindled the statistics show well, is, even then in terms of 545 lok sabha you had hardly well, is, 30 40 but well, the independents commanded a coordination well, my father also got in lok sabha an independent party investigate so i know that time was mr nath pai and so many people but today malas even then party democracy was everything was based on party you got a ticket and you fought and you won because the party projected you as his candidate that is now malas much much truer after the 60s today malas the number of independents compared to the 60s would be malas a fraction so it's party based democracy you like it or not malas not for anybody to question we've chosen it but there's nothing perfect some people say us is better some people say european but this is what we've chosen and now this third third balance third point is what what is the so point one is balance uh, split is split permissible split, merger is merger so third now the third point third comes with the light of what i said just now the whole idea of the 10th schedule is resign and recontest that's what is stopping you from doing 
you enter the door through this door and then you retain your ministership and seat while exiting through the other door sorry not permissible resign have the courage of your now you you are a very vocal freedom speaker you have the courage of your conviction we we'll just said jivan reddy referred to in that extract i'll be dealing with some of those not in the context of the tenth yeah. schedule but i'll be dealing with that some judgments have referred to it i'm going to suggest it because this is the core question my lord is narsimha asked my lord asked earlier what do we do when an overwhelming set of people want to express dissent 9 tenths let's say 9 out of 10 brothers let's take an extreme example how do we balance and countervail these two brothers competing balances the tenth schedule says you can go thus far in balancing not further brothers if you are so much for free speech courage of your conviction, it's in this is a rotten party i can't say resign and contest recontest what is the problem then what is the fourth is the exemptions there are there is well, apart from there is the exemption clause condonation whatever all that is given there now what we are well, we have to see is that if a constitutional amendment balances the prohibitory with the affirmative part you cannot find an excuse to circumvent well, the prohibitory part by going beyond the four avenues of the affirmative part now only three action is gone now let's let us take this further because that's your lordship's query you are so concerned about free speech you are resigning is one or you absolutely hate where you are and start your para 15 proceeding that i am the real party but you do that without indulging into the prohibitory part that's balus keeping the sanctity of the tenth schedule now i am addressing the core dilemma of my lords let me develop it balus in a minute that's also a statutory remedy lower than constitutional the fourth would be file a complaint to the election commission say look nine of us are standing here we are the party recognize us till then don't do any prohibitory activity the election commission will or will not recognize you and subject to challenge what does this do malus this maintains the sanctity of the tenth schedule and maintains the negative and the uh, the affirmative parts of the tenth schedule what does my lord normally prefer a option i give your lordships which reduces the other option to vanishing point or an option which harmonizes both elementary common sense shows that my learned friend stand reduces the tenth schedule to vanishing point it is as good as a dead letter or a repeal which is better the answer is self evident now let's hear just see well as how how this dead letter vanishing point arises you don't resign with the courage of your convictions to fight another election you don't go to the election commission till much later almost a month just under a month after 21st you went to guwahati 19th you go to the election commission two days before a month is ending you don't seek condonation what you do is bullets what i call a three steps novel procedure to annihilate the tenth schedule it's a three step novel procedure step one of which is disable the speaker by giving him a mere notice so the man can't touch you on the tenth schedule just see bullets my submission of harmonization versus vanishing point step two of this bullets a uh, sinister three step novel procedure is to forward resolutions parallelly to the governor who in turn makes it well as the basis of a trust vote direction and the final step 3 is the act of being sworn in as chief minister sorry the act of being sworn in as chief minister with malaz in other party fully supporting in whose lap you were in guwahati now malaz i i am not on the just kindly consider you don't follow the affirmative part which gives you play in the joints and leave it flexibility you don't resign you don't merge the most important interesting point is you don't merge just just see for a minute that b for b malus if you are sitting in their lap and they are supporting you and the last minute is still them becoming chief minister they may you chief minister what is the problem with merging so malus you say to hell with the tenth schedule it gives me an escape route i'll ignore it i'll go to the three steps and the language without opening it malus without opening it where his original political party merges with another political party and he claims and any other members of the original political party have become members of such political party or as the case may be of a new political party formed by such merger well as this is directly snooking a nose at the 10th schedule which is a constitutional creation it is well as i'm sorry to use colloquial is actually saying look to hell with the 10th schedule we have made this three step procedure why on earth could you not recontest resign merge or the fourth one condonation i am not always getting into that's another one go to the election commission and file a complaint then on 21st instead of surat and guwahati why did you not file the election commission so this is the first answer this is one of the 
best answer at least I can give to the direct question, but there is a consequential answer further ahead. <laughs> I'm putting it against myself and trying to answer it because I put this question to myself and Lordship asked it yesterday. Now, Malitz, a possible argument will be twofold. That is no argument because Malitz, how it works in actual law, a fact is not an argument against me. If the law is a prohibitive and a affirmative, then you jolly well follow it. That's the object of creating a constitution. But now I'm giving an answer against me even though it doesn't arise in law. The answer is, what happens, Mr. Singhvi, if between me, that is they, applying to the EC and doing these things which Mr. Singhvi advises them to do, the speaker disqualifies you. I am putting it bluntly against myself. Malus. Malus, first answer is, so what? Why was the tension schedule created? Malus? Is the speaker doing something unknown to law? But there is a better answer. If he disqualifies you, there is full judicial, mm. this is on the basis wrongly. wrongly. You said there is that. full judicial review. No, but you can't, Malus, your lordship can't find a solution to everything which the constant assembly, uh, the constant uh, amending people did not make. What is this answer? That what do I do? I will disqualified. Well, jolly well, you will be disqualified because the 1985 framers gave this power to the speaker. Is the possibility of an abuse ever the test of the power or its existence? Versus can it be? Otherwise, how will you also decide anything? Malus? Yes, that phrase comes from Rajdhanayan versus Rajdhanayan versus Indira Gandhi. Possibility of abuse is not the test of power. Give that citation. Hindustan, Hindustan judgment. One Hindustan construction, some judgment is there. Also, the sun construction. Abuse of power, power cannot be the. Your Lordship should judge everything. Oh, what will happen? What may happen? But that's not the question. Here, well, and your Lordship is talking of lesser cases. Here, the constitution was amended to give this power. And the apprehension is I will not go on 21st to speaker, I, uh, to EC. I will go to Guwahati because I'm scared of a disqualification. Now, well, let us look at the second. I'm giving your Lordship extreme examples against myself. You have a full review possible. My review is much more truncated. It takes one year for me to get this hearing before your lordships. Your review is immediate on a, a, a wrongful Malad's uh, decision against the speaker. And your lordship knows Kyoto says, after a final decision of the speaker, you will get a stay of that. You can't get a stay while he's deciding. You can get it afterwards. Of the disqualification also. Only a quiet limit is stopped. You are comparing that with what? With the fact that Malad, if you don't do this and stay and make the 10th schedule a dead letter and install a new government, on the basis of ignoring the 10th schedule, that is much less reversible by sheer passage of a few days than your right to challenge. Today, man, what is the whole argument? It's a scrambled end, it's a fake accompli, your Lordship can't reverse it. It's one year down the line. That's the real argument today. That's the argument we are facing. Now, let me give your Lordship another bizarre example against myself. These are not one of the normal examples, whereas I don't know of, except a very few number of cases, where you have the courage of conviction to resign and recontest that resignation is impeded. It happens. There are two or three judgments we have. But normally, let me assume against myself that I resign because of my high standards and my resignation is not accepted by the speaker. That's the worst I can assume against myself. Right. I can't assume something more than that. Again, the speaker can only reject my resignation and disqualify me. He cannot do anything more. The speaker cannot say that you shall do this or that. He, he, he at the most say, I reject your uh, uh, resignation and I disqualify you. Same remedy. That remedy, your lordship will stay in two seconds. Malus. Suppose your lordship had an MLA who resigned to fight a new election and the speaker, there may be bizarre cases, I don't know. Speaker said, no, I disqualify you. How long will it take a court to give a stay of that order? Malus? But here, Malus, none of these four or five possibilities is allowed to be tried because you apply, adopt a three-step procedure to annihilate the 10th schedule. 